Welcome to the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. On today, I have the pleasure of <laughs> bringing a new member to the team of New Cyber Frontier, Martha Lofman. So welcome, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so Martha, going to be joining the team, going to be hosting some shows. You'll see her on with uh, me co-hosting a couple of them here that we've already recorded, but uh, <laughs> this is our first one, really. But um, Martha is, uh, let's give a little bit about her background, um, the Director of Cybersecurity Workforce at SmoothStack, and they do apprenticeship programs, and we'll dive into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Also, military advisor for WESIS, and you see on her jacket there, the WESIS and uh, the SmoothStack, has done a lot of work with ISSA, former board members, several areas, uh, also works with NIST, nice working groups, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, contributes there quite extensively. So you heard a lot about workforce and this softer side, the human aspect of cybersecurity, which we think we need a lot here on New Cyber Frontier. So Martha, say hello and uh, tell us a little bit about your background, how you got to be where you're at. Oh my goodness. Um, well, hello. Um, how I got here is I originally was on a track to be a, a counselor, right? So I wanted to go into um, family counseling originally. Um, and then, um, I had a husband who was in the military, um, and he was severely wounded. So he was not able to get a job for a few years. And during that time, I thought that, you know, probably one of the most important things in our lives is the employment piece, right? What you do for a living and how you contribute to society really does impact you not just professionally and, and money and all of those other ways, but personally too, and your mental health. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I got a master's in industrial organizational psychology and ABD for a PhD in industrial psychometrics and um, started trying to get experience in career counseling. And it was really through career counseling that um, I discovered cybersecurity and you know just how vast this industry is and how important it is. Um, and really fell, fell in love instantly. Mm -hmm. So how did you choose? I mean, you had to yeah. sample other industries. Yeah. How did you decide this is it for me? Yeah. Well, um, you know, at the time, this is probably eight years ago. And this was what I call the wave of all of those big glossy posters that were being sent, um, you know, from certification providers um, saying, hey, if you get this certification, you can make $100,000 in cybersecurity. And these big glossy posters were being sent to all the workforce centers and military installations and universities out there. And it really created this myth that if someone with no experience just goes out there and gets a security plus, that they can get a job in cybersecurity and make really good money. Um, and this was really, um, it's almost was mean, right? Because we have a whole lot of people that spent their time and money getting certifications and couldn't get into the industry. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, something's wrong here. Someone's not telling the full truth. So I went and I joined my local ISSA chapter and started engaging with the local chamber um, and started, you know, going these different tech So meetups. you went on a social warrior path <laughs> to, to solve a problem. Yeah, so that's, that's like how it started, right? And now I found my people. <laughs> Let's take a break and hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back in a minute. Cyber Resilience Institute helps build strong cyber communities designed to prevent members from attack. Like building a neighborhood watch, it takes coordination and a sharing community to protect our identities and valuables in the virtual world. Typically, we hear that organizations know they need to do something to protect their cyber assets, but don't know where to begin. Let Cyber Resilience Institute help your community create an action plan. 
Cyber Resilience Institute will build your community or business marketplace so that it is designed to support a collective cyber defense. Contact them for more information at cyberresilienceinstitute.org. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. Uh, today, introducing our new host, Martha Lofman, uh, who is several areas director of cybersecurity, workforce development at SmoothStack, uh, and military advisor to WESIS, among some other associations that that roll in the past and even future looking at uh, working with NIST and NICE uh, to help develop some of the, the frameworks that you'll hear for education. But really, um, so much experience in that uh, education side and the workforce development and how the two connect. Uh, and I think, you know, this is such a big area that we represent so often very well in New Cyber Frontier, the technical, the military, uh, the advisory, the risk. Um, but this is something we hope to hear a lot from Martha in the future, mo you know, moving forward. So tell us about um, your roles and uh you know, we talked we talked about your background before the break, your mm -hmm. current roles, and what it means to with this apprenticeship program. So it's very exciting. Yeah. So really, my profession is in workforce development, um, and I care a lot about lining up um, the people and the employment, and you know whether or not that's the funding or the community to create pathways um, to get into cybersecurity. And so, um, you know, currently I have an apprenticeship um, with Smoothstack, um, and Smoothstack's mission really is to help increase diversity in IT and specifically in, within cybersecurity um, by increasing representation across all different demographics. Um, I will say that, you know, I feel like this is important for me to add that I don't actually put a lot of stake in diversity initiatives and programs because they they fail. Um, and they fail because there's not that ROI for everyone in the pipeline, right? There's not that high ROI for the business element of it. So why, while they're paying for the party, everybody joins, and when the money f funding goes away for the party, just goes away. Yeah, I mean, there's all of these, you know, failed initiatives out there where it's like, you know, hey, you know, we we care about diversity. Let's invite a whole bunch of diverse people to a meetup, mm -hmm. or it's a lot of awareness, right? And I I think of you know workforces awareness is an element of it, but show me the jobs, right? Like yeah. where is the job, and and not only where is the job, but employers don't want to hire someone just because they check a box of being diverse. They want to hire someone that's the best candidate out there, mm -hmm. regardless of what box they do or don't check. So your objective is to make that diverse person the best candidate? Kind of. I mean, I just, I don't buy into this idea that um, there's not diverse candidates out there that aren't the best. And I think this problem of a lack of diversity in cybersecurity is, is false. Um, I think that it's a lack of um, marketing, right? Um, a lack of maybe opportunities and onboarding, um, a lack of, you know, lots of things, but it's not a lack of the talent. Hmm. That's for sure. Interesting. So, uh, you know, a lot of times I, I've looked at the people and I, that we see in cybersecurity, the industry over, you know, I'd say 20 years ago, I remember sitting at a conference in in Georgia Tech and the you know, the auditorium was huge. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a mainstay that one of the biggest annual cybersecurity conferences you could go to at the time. Then there was probably about 40 people there and there was 20 seats between any two people in the audience. <laughs> um, and um, everybody was there to in, engage and listen. Yeah. And listen, that was the key right, term. Right, I heard, right. yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, as, as soon as everybody was done talking, the conference was over. Your dervis were still there. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so often it seems it seems like it's almost like a personality thing of the type of work has drawn that. Yeah. And that's the thing we're trying to overcome here. Is that something that, you know, that's what I feel has always been the divide. And as many diverse people and different personalities as you bring in, they don't seem to stay that long. You know, maybe I think it's really complex, right? So I think, first of all, cybersecurity is an industry. It's not a particular job in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so I've actually taken the time to map the 16 personalities out to different like cyber roles um, within cybersecurity. And I think that, you know, there really is a role for almost everybody in cybersecurity. So first I'll say that it's not really, are you a fit for cyber, but it's where are you a good fit for cyber? And second of all, and Chris, you and I have talked about this before is, 
you know, we have a marketing problem too, right? So it's this idea that if you want to market something to children, companies, they're good, right? McDonald's knows how to market to kids. They know how to get your attention on the freeway. They know what colors to use, what toys to put in the little box, and they know how to make kids scream and want a Happy Meal. Yeah, that they want to stop. <laughs> they yeah. want to stop, right? Um, they know the Playlands. Like, they know how to market. And so as an industry, we're saying, you know, we care about getting women, for example, into cybersecurity, but do a Google image search, right? Type in cybersecurity, do an image search search and look up, are these images, are the colors in the images resonating with women or are they, you know, on the spectrum, are they rated more masculine? Mm -hmm. And so are we marketing to women or are we marketing to men? And so we're, you know. Well, back to kind of my my example of yeah. the auditorium. Okay. <laughs> um, now, all those people were the deepest expert in whatever company they were in. Fair. Uh, and um, the you know the the company used sent them because they were the technical expert. Mm -hmm. But the companies didn't include cybersecurity in any of those areas that required the marketing team mm -hmm. or making of pictures. And most of those people didn't have a picture on their whole PowerPoint slide. <laughs> so it wasn't a matter of are the pictures male or female. It's, you know, is that whole side of our, the industry of comp companies, the balance of companies from marketing the product development to, to, you know, internal operations. Cybersecurity was always just such a small piece. It was just the technical people. Right. So it's almost changing that. And now finger. it's not. Yeah. It's not. It because we're trying to say, okay, more things have to be connected and cyber is across the board. I, th I think, yes, I think cyber is across the board and it needs to be integrated into all departments and verticals of an organization. Absolutely. And we absolutely should have equal representation of women in these highly technical roles in cybersecurity. So it, so it really should be both. That's a good thing to, to, to start with. And I know we've heard a lot of uh, even some of our early guests talking about um, – uh, programs for like middle-aged girls to get them into cyber. You know why they're interested that young age to keep them there through. You know, middle-aged girls mean middle age school. middle school. Middle okay, school, I thought right. you meant like me, like a middle age. <laughs> no, middle, middle school. <laughs> where we're not going. You know, yeah, we're not totally <laughs> stratifying here. But uh, and uh, is and I've heard that's where that girls are kind of lost from getting into that industry. And it might be exactly what you're saying, the pictures. And They're not being marketed to. So who, but the companies aren't thinking that way because they're thinking about the job needed, not the pipeline. Who's kind of responsible for that pipeline? Is that, is that NIST? Is that NICE? Is that, you know, CAMI? Is that organizations? Just curious where does, because usually the problem yeah. is is funding to get those things across and the pictures are there because- Whoever made them for the job was a technical person, but who now does that? Is it every company should get together and put marketing together or who? That's interesting. So, I mean, I'm going to say no one is singular responsible for this and therefore everyone has a responsibility to play. And I think that's where something called dissolution of responsibility kicks in is when you don't have a single group or entity responsible for this, then it kind of becomes this idea of, oh, well, everyone's having the same problem. So it totally is fine that our sock is made up of 98% men mm -hmm. um, because it's, you know, I'm not responsible to fix the world's problems kind of a situation. Interesting. Let's hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back in a minute. So welcome back to New Cyber Frontier on today with our new host, Martha Lofman, kind of her introductory uh, podcast. And before the break, we were talking about um, diversity and uh, mm -hmm. Martha made the, the comment that if you do a search for pictures in cybersecurity, nothing's appealing. You know, it's not like McDonald's marketing to children, they know how to get the new yeah. customer in. Nothing's appealing to to women or some of the, the diverse, you know, the diverse populations that they're, that the industry would like to have. Um, and then we said, who's responsible for doing that? 
and you know, kind of going back to in the technical technical fields, our and you said when nobody's responsible, then everybody is. We've realized that a lot in the technical area by saying, you know, that's where standards groups came from. Yeah. Well, if all these people make a certain technology mm-hmm. for the internet, nobody's responsible, but everybody is. Mm-hmm. Let's get together a standards group where we one person from every company starts solving this problem. And we know those work. Yeah, they 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 <laughs> do produce conversations and and, and meeting points and documents. And documents. Yep. Uh, um, but if we said, let's take that appeal that approach for diversification for getting you know women and other diverse you know diversity into the cybersecurity area is WESIS a good platform for that i mean they have come on board in the last couple of years mm-hmm. and conferences in the thousands i haven't seen cybersecurity conference over 2 or 300 for years um <laughs> so there's something there that's yeah. knocking on the door could we maybe say that is a is a standards body type of thing where we're all getting together across the industry to start addressing this issue. Yeah, you know, I think WESIS does it a, a little bit different, right? So WESIS Women's Cybersecurity is a nonprofit dedicated to getting women in cybersecurity roles, right? And increasing representation. In the last few years, we've gone from 11% women in cybersecurity up to 25%. So there has been a huge, you know, shift, um, upward shift, which is which is great. Still a long ways to go, right? Um, but, you know, I would like to see cybersecurity become what we call a pink collar job, um, a pink collar industry, meaning that, you know, it's dominated by women. It's a great, um, there's lots of opportunity for women in cybersecurity. Um, it fits in with the way, you know, that, you know, women think um, and um, the diversity that we have and the opportunities that we have. Um, and I think WESIS is, is helping to, to motivate that trend. So WESIS has a annual conference. And um, for every student or mentee or novice that they have at their conference, you have to have a professional. So it really is 50-50 professional and um, novice student represent, which is mm-hmm. which is different because, you know, we've been to those conferences where it's all professionals, no students or vice versa, all students, no professionals. But to go to one that has an equal balance, it really is valuable for everybody. Interesting. So. Going back to to looking at the the marketing thing and pictures. Sure. If you did a search for pictures, I know this is some an area you're personally kind of kind of working on that mm-hmm. classification. Um, how, what where what change is needed there, and what what are you finding out when you're looking at that? Mm. I think that you know it's overall when you look at these images, it's really easy to say, well, that represents cybersecurity, so we don't think anything of it. But I'm not really sure why we think that these almost, I would call them masculine images, represent cybersecurity, right? Why is You're it talking that- about like all the blue images with people in hoodies and the, the, yeah. the ones and zeros everywhere and the dark? Why Why is someone dreary? who is a hacker going to be wearing a hoodie, you know, in the dark versus wearing, you know, an Ann Taylor blouse um, having coffee at her kitchen the counter? Table. Right. You know, why, why is that? Why do we choose certain images over other ones? Now I have seen that, that for years where it, I I would almost classify it as the cybersecurity has been that, that um, restricting almost like the negativity of, you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. You have to secure this. The people are breaking this. Uh, So much of it run by people who are trying to break things and this dichotomy, but both sides of that are thinking almost in the negative where those images you're talking about, I think, have as much of a negative connotation as they do a masculine. You know, I would, I, you know, I would be interesting for me, kind of taking a small step away from images and looking at words too, to take the si- same job description, reduce it down to the KSAs and what exactly responsibilities you have on the job, take out the word cybersecurity and have it rewritten from a, you know, you know, a feminist voice or perspective or, Mm -hmm. you know, and, or if we just said a business voice, a business voice. Yeah. You know, even, even make it neutral. And you think of like what, you know, being, you know, communicating, um, and, um, mitigating, you know, urgent needs and, um, you know, implementing tools, um, all of the things that you think of when you think of an analyst, for example, um, appeal very much to women yet, you read this job description for an analyst, you look at the images that are out there of analysts doing the work and 
that's not as appealing. Yeah, interesting. So as we kind of move forward here, Martha's going to be doing a lot of interviews and hopefully getting some guests along these topics. <laughs> and what we're asking for today, kind of introducing her, is to reach out to us um, and get the conversation going in many of these areas that that Martha is, 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 is an expert in and will bring to the show. Um, give us kind of a, a, an example of people you might want to talk to or might want to you know reach out to, and talk to, come in as, as guests on the show. I mean, really anyone and everyone. I would be interested in helping to facilitate conversations where people are interested in increasing representation, where they're interested in really doing a, a deep dive into, you know, almost reverse engineering why we're in the situation we're in with our workforce, not just with women or, you know, people of color, um, neurodiversity, right? Or the numbers we need, you know, quality and quantity of these positions to be filled. So, you know, I really see myself as a workforce development um, professional. And I think that that's a very, very important aspect of cybersecurity currently. Yeah. And don't be scared to off if you if you think, well, I'm not a workforce person, I'm a technical, because she can also talk technical pretty well. <laughs> so um, sometimes I'm surprised, like, oh yeah, okay, she had actual brought up a question in that area, but you just said you were surprised that I am I surprised can. of okay. your talent <laughs> quite often. So, <laughs> but um, this is definitely a, a, you know going to be a great uh, addition to the new cyber frontier uh, kind of family, and uh, we hope that. Uh, we wish you much success. The next couple you'll hear, we've already sneakfully <laughs> recorded some this morning before this one, um, before we even introduced her. But uh, you'll hear those coming out over the next couple of weeks as well after this one comes out. But welcome to the team. Thank you. And uh, anything last minute in closing that you want to just say? Um, you know, just one small closing thought is I think that our, our children are way far ahead of the game than we are when it comes to um, diversity and inclusion. And if anyone has little kids out there and they play Fortnite, you'll see that these female characters that they're playing, right? And the colors and the images and the female characters way, way um, are more popular than the, the more masculine male characters that were popular when I was a kid. So I think that with this younger generation coming up, it will solve a lot of our, our balance problems with gender diversity. Interesting. Definitely. And uh, hopefully we'll get some of those new uh, young people young people on <laughs> as well and uh, hear from them. And especially when they're joining the workforce, um, I think just the other day you were talking about a, a army cyber team that plays video games. Sports. We have the, the U.S. Army um, having an e-sport champion. Um, you know, it's, that their full time job is to play video games. I don't know if it's full time for protection they of our country. Hey, now it's esports is a big deal, and you know this is this is what's trending, and it's. I know, guess it's no different than like the the race car that has army on it, right? It's kind of like Team Army for racing, Team Army for you know sport, it, it's, it's interesting because I think of the Olympic development program that the military has, and physical fitness obviously with our soldiers is a big deal. And now we have technology and these, you know, the mental fitness it, and, is a big deal. Yeah. And so now they're investing in, in esports and it, it's, you know, to us old people, right? We're like, wait, wait a minute. You're investing in people playing video games, but it's, it makes sense. Yeah. It's this new skill set required yeah. to be the expert people in the, in the cybersecurity or even just the technology operations. Yeah. And if I have a soldier behind a keyboard, you know, protecting and defending, you know, our infrastructure, you know, I want that to be not just his profession, but his hobby and his passion too. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, thanks a lot. And uh, stay tuned to hear more from Martha. Uh, this has been Chris Gorog and Martha Lofman. We're heading out for today. Thanks a lot for joining. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of New Cyber Frontier. Remember to get involved. Often we think that someone else will handle privacy and security in the virtual world, but you are the only one truly in command of your virtual fate. Join our mailing list so we can keep you informed of breaking news and new releases. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at newcyberfrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. 
I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier. <laughs>